right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from a rainy San Diego. I'm getting used to saying that now. This is terrible. I, uh, it's going to have to do something. I'm going to complain to the government very soon. Uh, <laughs> and today I am joined by Carol Williams, who is on the other side of the country in New Hampshire. How are you doing, Carol? I'm doing wonderfully. Thank you very much. Nice and sunny out here. Yeah, yeah they're there. Yeah, so the world's gone mad. It's all up. Everything's <laughs> upside down. Uh, and uh, and Carol is from unscatterme.com. And what we're going to talk about today is is how to stop working so hard for so little money because mm -hmm. Carol is known as Coach Carol is a productivity guru. And so we're going to talk about why are we working so hard for so little money? Or mm -hmm. maybe we're maybe it's not we're working so hard, maybe we're so scattered and so distracted. Um so uh you know starting starting uh out Carol so the concept of time management, we all know, we all know that we should manage our time and time management. Yeah. Mostly when you mention those two words like time management, like people go, oh, you know, and they kind of want, don't really want to go because it just sounds, it sounds hard. Yeah. Right? yeah, it does, doesn't it? It does sound hard and nobody wants it to be hard. Yeah, exactly. So how do so, you start? Yeah. How do I start? Okay, great. Um, there's a couple different ways, and I'm going to jump right into the, oh, it's so hard. I want to <laughs> so, <laughs> so because it, I had been doing this since about 2009, so a little while, I decided to make it a lot easier and a lot more fun, okay? And you can see right behind me, this is real. It's not a green screen. That's a real thing. Um, there's steps um, to get there. When you get to number three, that's discover. <laughs> so when you go from decide to discern to discover, when you go to discover, I'm going to show you this. This is a cake, a mm. productivity success cake. I created that. I created that because what I was realizing over many years of helping people with their time, that right here, you can see it's on the third layer, mm -hmm. time and tasks, okay? Yep. So if, this, if something that you're really struggling with that you think Ugh, is on the third layer, one has to ask, well, hang on, what's on the second layer? What's on the first layer? And I'm glad you asked, because mm -hmm. let, me, let me tell you a little bit about what's on those layers and why they're there. So this bottom layer is the thing that we all know, but we all just sort of push to the back. And that's our health layer. Mm -hmm. We must have, for example, a reasonable amount of sleep, decent food. We have to move our bodies. I mean, the things that we know but we always put like, oh, I'm so busy. I've got to, you know, I got to manage my time better. I'm going to get more done. Like, well, I'm too busy for that. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Okay. The second layer has to do with your environment. So it's all things like, what's your physical space like? If you're working in an office, home office or otherwise, that has this here and that here and, you know, piles everywhere, that gets in your brain, oh, right? Yeah. Your environment is really important. And your environment, is bigger than just the uh, surroundings. It's also the people. Yeah. So on, yeah. So on that layer is circle of support. That's your team, right? That's your circle of support. I'm backwards here, so I can't, you know, walk and chew gum over. But uh, and then light your light. So there's this environment thing. Is more is is the physical, and it's more. Mm -hmm. Then and only then do I say, okay, great, fine. Now we'll have a look at the time management. So the first that's on that third layer, which is your productivity layer. Yeah. So, let, me, let me take you back just to the first layer for, for yeah. a moment. And uh, because I think that's a critical piece because let's face it, we, we, we make excuses for ourselves, right? You know, oh, well, I don't have time to, to exercise. No, I don't have time. You know, I'll grab and go with my food, all of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And we blame because we're so busy. We blame all these other mm -hmm. things. But to the point you're making is if we don't take care of those things, we don't have the real capacity to do the other things, right? Yes. And and I get it that this is very simplistic mm -hmm. and that we hear it from all sides. Yet, if if it were so simple, why, why aren't we doing it, yeah. right? Simple doesn't and, equate to easy. Yes. But here's what is easy. Cake. Yes. Cake is always easy. And this cake, I tell, like to tell people, is calorie-free. 
Mm -hmm. So, um, and especially the people I, I tend to work with um, are those people who might label themselves neurodiverse or ADHD or just got a lot going on or so on. And what I find is, is that when, with anybody cleans up their diet, we all feel better. Mm -hmm. The people that uh, would fall into those categories are the people that tend to, to um, get gravitated towards me or, or gravitate towards me uh, tend to have hypersensitivities mm -hmm. towards their environment, um, right? And towards their food, like in, regarding their food. And so if it were to affect uh, person A without a neurodiverse brain um, negatively, what happens is person B with a neurodiverse brain, it affects so much more nice. to the point where that person's already struggling with managing their time uh, because of how their brain is, is uh, put together, right? So we have to make sure that we're firing on all cylinders. So as you say, we're ready to receive the strategies that I then teach. Yeah. And, 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 and about the environment, like you said, is... Um... You know, we've we've come up to this thing where we remember it used to be you know desk messy desks. Oh, that person must be really busy, right? You know, because they're <laughs> everything is everywhere, and 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 we don't. And, and I, I I like I, I really agree with this. I think sometimes we probably have paid more attention to the offices when we're in physical offices than maybe mm. offices. maybe it's kind of been an afterthought, or we just said, oh well, there's a space I can use. But mm -hmm. I think the point is you need to put a little more thought into that because if you're going to spend time in the space, the space needs to be conducive to you spending time in it, right? That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, uh, in the cohort that I'm in right now, so I have eight people in a cohort that go through my various uh, programs. I, I love doing that because the participants learn, but they also contribute. Mm -hmm. And there was this one woman who decided she needed to contribute. And there was this, um, I, I'm not going to say it uh, just right, but there was a radius of where things um, are to be on your desk in an optimal way. Mm. So, you know, certain things should be in, in touching distance. Other things uh, should be a little bit further away. And then still other things should be kind of put away. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, th that was really cool. Yeah, no, I did years years ago. Uh, I did a lean office uh, course oh, yeah. at University of Michigan, and one of the things and the principles of that it was like you know you looked around your you looked around your office, and this is when we were all in physical offices and that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you look at simple things like this group over here. They use the printer almost nonstop, but the printer is on the other side of the office. So right. using so much productivity every day because the person is printing, getting up, walking over, bringing the printer back. So the obvious thing is move the printer closer. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, but it, it's obvious, but it's not obvious at the same time, right? And so yeah. things like that uh, in getting your environment. And how does that then set you up for level three? Well, let's see. So if our brains are ready to receive, um, it's not so different than school children, right? They have to have that good breakfast and that, that plenty of sleep. If, if not, they'll wake up and space out and get into trouble. It's the same thing with you and your work day. So if you haven't got enough rest, if you're not in the right environment with, with people that surrounding you that are both personal and professional that uh, are, are having you ready to receive, time management strategies, uh, focusing strategies, uh, remembering to remember, remember strategies, all the things I teach, uh, then then you're coming in with a, um, a handicap, right? So that's how they set it up. Right. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's, let's talk about level three. Okay, let's talk about level three. So in level three, there are four pieces of cake and time and tasks is one piece of it. So it's power focus, the ability to focus in, remembering to remember. And what that means is um, what is my system to remember that I have to remember something? And, and it, it's a little bit of a mind game, but mm -hmm. if, especially if you're neurodiverse, ADHD, you'll know what I'm talking about. Then the third one is time and tasks. And the last one is all about how to avoid um, the interruptions and the procrastination. Mm -hmm. So, um, and what I find about that last one, I'll just start there, is that uh, the interruptions almost always are our own. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> I, As you say, especially since we are now, uh, at least most of us are working a hybrid, maybe we're working completely 
um, in our own um, offices as salespeople, as entrepreneurs, uh, or on the road, we are the ones who interrupt ourselves. I I uh, I, I often say to to people because. Yeah, you know, everybody says nowadays, like, oh, I'm busier than I've ever been in, in my life. And and I always say, but are you really or are you more distracted than you've ever been in your life? Mm-hmm. Let's face it. Um, you know, we have these little devices here that go, oh, look at me, look at me. Uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, you have instant access to your sports team, whatever. If you, I, I always think that if you did an old fashioned time and motion study and somebody was standing behind you with the clipboard, it'd probably be frightening what they would find. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's and as you know, it's uh it's addictive as well. Yep. So you know what happens with an with an addiction? Well, you sometimes you have to go go cold turkey, or, mm-hmm. or sometimes not. So, um, but I but I don't recommend people go cold turkey um, mm-hmm. unless they want to. There's ways to do it, like eighty twenty rule. You know, so if you if you've got your phone and you have all the notifications on, and every time you are ping, you're you're paying attention to it. Productivity wise, you probably know that's bringing things down, but there's this addiction. There's this dopamine. I got to answer. And then and then even worse is that the person on the other end is so happy that you've you've replied that they'll say, oh, thank you so much for your quick reply. And you're like, yeah, I got that quick reply going. I'm sorry, you know, and, and it's true with email or with anything else. So it perpetuates this feeling of. I got, I got it. But what happens at the end of those days? We're exhausted. Mm-hmm. So going back to the 80, 20 rule. So if hundred percent of your time, you're doing this, what if you just took 20% and said for this 20%, I'm going to put my phone on, do not disturb. I'm going to put it in the other room, whatever it is. And I am going to stay focused on just what I'm doing. And at first, it's almost like a like a, a drug withdrawal. It's like, well, mm-hmm. well, wait, where's where's my little device? You know, you have nomophobia. You know, that's a thing. Nomophobia. Nomophobia. Yeah. <laughs> nomophobia. It's like when you forget your phone. And yeah. remember the olden days where you leave you'd leave your house. And you're like, oh my gosh, I like forgot my phone. Probably doesn't happen anymore. But used mm-hmm. to, I bet. That's nomophobia. And but what'll happen is your nervous system starts to reset itself. And when your nervous system starts to reset itself, you know what you do? Think more clearly. You interrupt yourself less. You procrastinate less. You focus more. You remember more. And you can stay on task more. Mm. And what you set out uh, for yourself regarding managing your time, um, you actually do instead of avoid. There's a lot more to it, but that's just one scenario. Yeah, and that's 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 interesting. Uh, you know, doing as opposed to avoiding, just changing that whole, um, changing that whole mindset. And and I think the other thing is, as as you mentioned earlier, like if you're if you're stuck on something, it's very easy just to go, oh well, I'm stuck, and then I'll just go off and I'll distract myself, do everything else, rather mm-hmm. than say, okay, maybe I need to stop for a moment, but I need to come back. Right. Mm -hmm. Because often Mm -hmm. we get stuck and we go out, we say, well, I'll take a break from this and go out and then forget to come back. Well, you know what I find, John, (laughs) is when people get stuck, they actually don't do that step, what you just said, which is, uh, oh, I'm stuck on this. Actually, that piece is omitted. Mm -hmm. What happens instead, let's just say they're in the middle of, I don't know, writing a proposal. I don't know, whatever it is. And then they see an email come in. And it's from somebody because they have their email open. It comes across their screen. It's like, oh, my gosh, that's right. I've got to get back to that person. Oh, and that's it. And then they're off and running. Now they're in their inbox. And then next thing you know, there's pings on their phone. And they've forgotten all about it. So what you talked about, one of the um, is, is critical to notice where am I and what am I doing? And I call that the power of the pause. Mm-hmm. It's like, Hang on. I'm not sure what I'm doing right now. What will I do instead? Let me let me shut my computer, perhaps. Let me let me take a, a walk, get a cup of tea, something. Let me rethink. Like let me storyboard this proposal, mm. right? With a pen, an actual paper. Because what happens is when we're outside of this electronic trance, and we start to um, bring in one of these. Remember these? Yeah. Pencil. 
And I, I love these. This is just me, though, because I'm kind of an artist at heart, right? So I have an actual drawing pencil. It doesn't matter what you have. If you put pen or pencil to paper in any way, shape, or form, a different piece of your brain is being used. And it is all it is visual and, um, and tactile. And, and when you're doing all of that, different parts of your brain wake up in the cre creative part of your brain, which is needed for something like a proposal. Never mind creating content and, you know, different ways to approach people or whatever it is you're doing. That's a strategy. And what and to, to mention that you're not in front of your computer with all of these distractions and that and that mm -hmm. zombiness. Now you can come back, feel more calm, open up a new document, put your put your phone and or your you know computer on do not disturb. Set your timer. I'm going to do this for 30 minutes. Maybe put some nice music on the background if that helps you, mm -hmm. and then focus. Yeah. That's how you get stuff done. That's yeah. time management. Yeah, no, I know. I I agree. I mean, the other thing too, and I think they've 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 proven this or whatever. But if you write, you know, say if you write your to do list down on paper as opposed to do it digitally, you're more likely to do it. You know, like and have one hundred percent. And and an intro. I did a little interesting experiment because my son is in his first year in uh, in college. And, uh, and I gave him, I gave him one of these hardback notebooks and I said, here, try, cause he was saying he was so busy and he, all this stuff. And I said, try writing your stuff down in this. And I said, don't use your phone, just write it down on this. And that's mm -hmm. what he does now. He loves it. Loves it. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and I'm actually surprised. Um, so I work with people with all different kinds of brains, but a lot, a lot with neurodiverse and one of the, um, there's lots of books and there's lots of options problem is there's too many options but one of them is called uh, the bullet journal or the bujo and while i was doing some research for a particular high end client that wanted a new solution to manage his time i was watching these videos of these folks with the bujo and i was noticing that these folks are not old they're like all oh my gosh in their 20s mm -hmm. and they love it yep. they love the tactile piece of it and i'm like i guess we're it's kind of like, I won't say we're going backwards, but we're going back to something that has been tried and true. Now, of course, if you lose your bujo. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, well, you could, problem. I guess you could lose your phone too, but anyway. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So, so, uh, so the next, next, um, your next level is four. Yeah, the le next level is four, right? Thank you for bringing me back. So that piece is rinse and repeat and sharpen the saw. Because what, what people think is, you know, okay, gosh, once I've done all my pieces in the cake, I'm done. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> and you can be there for a while. I say, you know, color in your cake. Like, you know, you can make a different, you know, a different size cake, a different flavor cake. We have so much fun with the whole cake thing. But anyway, this top piece is sharp in your saw. Rest, uh, digest. That's really important mm -hmm. to digest what you've done. As entrepreneurs, what we do is we go from do, so we're, we're here uh, to start start with, and we're trying to do something. We have a goal, and what we do is we go and do the goal, and then we go back right back. Mm. And what we need to do is we need to take a pause, and we need to digest. So we need to digest. It's like a Thanksgiving dinner or holiday meal, right? Digest it, learn from it, and so on. And then when you're ready, you go to level four, which is that rinse and repeat and the sharp and the saw. Yeah. And I might add, there's a couple more things to the cake. The top, the, the candles are the celebrations. Mm -hmm. Why that's important. When people are trying to improve themselves, what do they think of? Uh, success. They don't. Oh, no, they, they don't. They think, they, think of... uh -uh. they think about the the opposite. They it's think failure. about all the things they want to improve, the things that are wrong. And so by focusing on those things, you know what they get more of? things wrong. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we do is I say, great, what are your celebrations for the beginning of every single session? And yep. they, this can be very difficult. So we go easy on them. Okay. You showed up great celebration. Mm -hmm. Right. And then over time, I had this one guy who had never heard about this stuff before. And he got so crazy with the celebrations. He says, I want this whole session to be all about celebrations. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> actually true because landing these things has you go forward and it makes it easier to uh continue on because the work is 
the work is hard as an entrepreneur or as a salesperson. You get a lot of no's. You have a lot of failures. Yeah. So it's important to celebrate. And the last thing I'll, I'll point out on this, on this uh, is this red line. And this red line is the frosting, which represents your why. Uh, it is so important. Why are you managing your time? Why are you baking your cake? Why are you doing what you're doing? Because the road is hard and long. It is filled with a lot of potholes. You will fail. I will fail. I, and we will fail a lot. And I'm sure that our folks that are listening have heard fail, fail big, fail hard, fail better. Mm -hmm. That's easy to say. But in the truth of the matter is that that is not easy to, you know, execute. <laughs> so having that why, especially if it's frosting, because everybody likes frosting, yeah. is is really important. Yeah, no, I I love that. Yeah, because the journey is, I mean, sometimes our our journey, it's it's like an old Irish country road, you know, it's windy and sometimes makes zero sense where it's going, but that's okay uh, yeah. at the time. But you always get there in the end. But I also agree with the celebration thing. I interviewed somebody a number of years ago and I loved what he said. He was a sales he was a salesperson. He said, when I do my prospecting, he goes, I set my goal. If I if I land, you know, three appointments from my prospecting today then i'm going to i'm going to reward myself with a movie tonight he goes how if i don't land those three but i can honestly say i did everything i could today mm. then I'll give myself a little reward like some ice cream or something but i thought that was nice because your point is we focus on failure we focus on deficiencies mm. we focus on everything that's wrong and we rarely take a step back to go oh that good that worked that was good what i run into when i when i'm really sort of cajoling people into the concept of celebrating mm -hmm. just like you say the three appointments not not the sale but the three yeah. appointments there's a there's a thing running in people's heads like that's not good enough yeah that's uh you know that's selling myself out that's lowering the bar you know i'm i i'm a high achiever and um that's another whole thing we could probably talk about in a different topic, but the mm -hmm. overachiever in all of us can basically kill. In fact, procrastination has a partner and it's called perfection. Oh yeah. Where we're perfectionists, we procrastinate and we procrastinate. We're not managing our time. Well, so you can start to see how all the cake pieces mm -hmm. really do um, fit together. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, I agree with perfection because the perfectionists actually tend to not get very much done because and, and it and in many ways, perfectionism is a kind of a, it's a nice defense get out of jail card in many ways, you know, because you never have to deliver anything if it's not perfect and nothing is ever perfect. <laughs> right, right, right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so what I will just say in, in to close out the cake. Yeah part of it, which is actually only is, is the third step, but it's it's a pretty fun step that mm -hmm. I chose to focus on. When we can look in a fun way at where we are with all of these, and I do have an assessment right on my website, it's free, right. it's called Productivity Quiz. Um, then we can start to say, oh, wow, hang on. In a one to 10, I've rated myself uh, 10 and nine and eight in these things, but look, um, I've fallen out of the exercise routine. Maybe I'll decide to, now that it's spring, I may decide to walk a bit more. So people can do this on their own. They don't have to hire me. They just have to take a look at what, what have I, you know, it's a different way to look at something. And over time, um, it may help. And if not, I'm always here. Yeah, fantastic. Well, listen, all of Coach Carol's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Sure. So more about me, you know, those uh, entrepreneurs that are all over the place, they're doing this and they're doing that and they're not earning enough money and they're getting exhausted. Well, I support those entrepreneurs to go from scattered and stuck to focused and confident. And behind me is, is the tool that I help them with. And as you can see, this big red thing here, that's decide. We haven't talked about decide, but the great news is, is that I have a whole PDF to help you decide. That can be at the absolute crux before the cake, before the cake. Uh, if you can get yourself to a beautiful decision through the, through this PDF, it it might just spark everything you need. Thank and you. Um, yep, that's what I got. 
And as I said, all the information will be below the video. So go check it out. I, I encourage you. Because let's face it, we're not going to get any less distracted unless we make an effort, a, a conscious effort to, to tackle it. Because there's who knows what's coming next uh, that's going to you know, be another thing to just knock us off track on a daily basis. So thank <laughs> you, Carol. What fantastic insights. Thank you for watching and listening. See you all again soon. Thank you.